So hi, I'm Paul Price. Um, I'm the editorial director for the Social Science Research Council. I'm here today with the president of the Social Science Research Council, Craig Kalman. And uh, uh, Craig is uh, an acclaimed scholar on political and social movements, uh, having written a book on the social foundations of uh, popular radicalism during the Industrial Revolution, also releasing soon a book on the roots of radicalism. And also he's um, the editor of a recent series on possible futures, which brought together uh, 36 social scientists to talk about the financial crisis, its repercussions, and where we're going to go. Uh, so I won't hold back any further here. Craig, I want to go straight to the question. You know, it's not an exaggeration, I think, to say that we are in a time of social economic upheaval. And I've got to ask you, as a, both a historian and as a sociologist, What's going on here? <laughs> of course, the answer is a lot of things are going on at once. Maybe a, a useful distinction to start with is that it's a time of upheaval, of lots of things coming unstuck that had seemed fairly settled. So stable patterns of capitalist economic uh, change, political systems that had seemed to be working, political processes like the unification of Europe and the EU, have been called into question. The Arab Spring movement, a variety of other movements are going on. It's one thing to say that there's an upheaval in the sense in which the systems that we live in aren't working especially well and things are changing. And it's another thing to point to the existence of social movements, which have to do with ways people are trying to get a handle on what's changing and shape it. And so I think we have a mixture of things that nobody ever exactly intended with the intentional effort by large numbers of people to try to shape the course of social change. Well, we have some um, different tributaries, if you like, of this uh, attempt to change uh, through social movements. And two significant ones in the United States, at least, are the, the Occupy uh, Wall Street movement on the one hand, and then the Tea Partiers on the other hand. And then if you, you know, look a little more broadly, you've got the anti-immigrant groups in, in Europe uh, mobilizing on the right. And you've got movements similar to the Occupy Wall Street uh, 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 at work in Europe on the left. Um, talk to me a little bit about, about the similarities, the differences between what I take to be essentially two different strains of populist reaction to what's going on. I think that's a good label to say that there's an element of reaction and an element of populism. Uh, maybe not exactly the same thing, but commonly going together. Neither of these is simply the result of an ideological position taken in the abstract. Okay, here's how we want to build a better world. Here is a vision laid out in great formal detail. Now let's make progress towards that. Each of them has large elements of reaction to events, to things that are going on, to trends that people don't like, whether on the right or the left. And each of them has an element of embracing the idea of people who are in some sense being left out of consideration in the decisions of political elites and in the boardrooms that are distributing capitalist profits. So whether it's the Tea Party talking about taking back America or it's Occupy Wall Street talking about the 99%, in each case there's an embrace of the notion of the people at large. One of the things that comes with that is that the people at large have many different ideas and many different self-understandings and these aren't limited to or controlled by the left-right distinction. So there are meeting points, a lot of skepticism of the Federal Reserve System yes, on fair. both the left and the right at the moment. They have divergences. There's much more of an anxiety about immigration and about the displacement of a traditional, predominantly white majority on the Tea Party side than there is on the Occupy Wall Street side, where there's much more anxiety about the way in which an economic system has begun to deprive people of the chance to choose their ways of life. The, the commonality 
isn't that they agree on an ideology, it's that neither one of them is led entirely by ideology, it seems to me. That there are a mixture of different ideas in each case. There's no single Tea Party organization. There are a bunch of groups, the Tea Party Express or others, claiming to represent the Tea Party. But in fact, this is a relatively loose-knit collection of different people, several different organizations, and crowds that come together exceeding membership in any particular organizations. And they have some fairly strong alliances to the Republican Party in some quarters, but they go out of their way to say that they aren't just about partisan politics. They are about uh, something broader, more basic. Well, something similar is going on in that sense, organizationally, with the Tea Party, which is an amalgamation, I mean, sorry, with the Occupy Wall Street, yes. which is an amalgamation of a variety of different groups and people who weren't a part of any group, who sort of resonated with early parts of the message, who felt frustrated with the situation, who were unhappy that nobody seemed to be speaking for them, and came out and became participants of this. And not just at Zuccotti Square in New York, but in 50 or 100 different cities around the United States. 150 is the latest count. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, um, and it'll be a bigger count, because I think this is growing and spreading rapidly. The, there are big differences in how people define the situation. The Tea Party, so-called, that particular coalition, has defined the situation as having more to do with political elites that are acting in ways at odds with the broader population, and particularly has an animosity towards President Obama. The Occupy Wall Street group may be disappointed in President Obama and some political elites, but they're identifying issues that go beyond just the actions of those political elites that have to do with the economic structure of the country, with the extent to which Profits and wealth are concentrated in a very small part of the population. And so they're, they have a different diagnosis, I think. And that relates to different ideas about what would be the desirable course of progress in the future.